Hello fellow hobbyists, I'm Jason and you're joining me here today on Level Up Hobbies, where I build, paint, and play tabletop games. Now today I'm going to be painting up Arimon of the Thousand Suns Chaos Space Marine Chapter. Now this model is full of details and it took me quite a while to actually complete because I had a number of errors that I had right off the bat, which kind of slowed me down. Um, so maybe don't paint him like I do, I don't know. Uh, but anyways, uh, there's a lot to get to, so let's go ahead and start painting. Enjoy. And here we start off with some black surface primer. I'm using Steinol Res, but uh, you can use anything that you prefer. Um, the idea here is just to coat all of the plastic and just prepare the surface for the paint. It just kind of homogenizes uh, that layer there. Next I used some titanium white ink and I pretty much put a base coat down on the entire model. I do leave some, uh, some black showing uh, and grays, uh, but I, I'm going to be using a lot of contrast colors so this way uh, that underpainting will create a, a very bright canvas to work off of. Next I go in with some the Siliconum Gray contrast paint and through my airbrush I just start deepening those shadows that I had left behind because um, I want some very high contrast, bright highlights and dark shadows in some of these areas. So just build it up a little bit at a time and uh, prepare it for that contrast paint. Then I go back in with some white and I build up those highlights so I have a very good transition and a lot more contrast. Now I'm going to make a mix of Citadel Volipus Pink Contrast and Shaish Purple Contrast Paints. Um, it's going to be mostly uh, Volipus Pink and then I darken it up with just by adding a little bit of the uh, Shaish Purple. And this will give me a, a nice kind of uh, maroon color for his cloak. And here's where I mess up the first time. So immediately after I start painting this on here, I can see that it is, it's not what I initially you know, anticipated for it. I have used both of these paints separately before with very little to no issues, but mixed together they just it was very blotchy and had poor coverage in some areas and over coverage in others and it just it did not look good at all but i figured i'd already started let's get it on and see how it you know turns out if i need to i'll put on a second coat which kind of defeats the purpose of my underpainting but uh Let's just see how it goes. Yeah, this did not turn out well at all. Um, I'm was not happy with how this dried. And so I'm going to go in and 
add another coat and hopefully it will even out which most contrast paints if you put a second coat on like it really evens out the colors and stuff uh, this goes on and it just it's way too dark like it is it is not what I was hoping for here um, but again you know I'm gonna I'm gonna push through I'm gonna make it work and you know it's it'll be fine in the end yeah you know, I hope well number two So in my haste to get that second coat on, um, I didn't realize that some of the first coat was still wet and I ended up pulling it up. Um, so then I have these horrible like divot spots in the paint. Um, it, 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 look, it looks really, really bad. So I grab some sandpaper and I start you know, sanding those back down smooth. And I'm going to start over. Prime, white, and back to the color. This time, I decide to use my contrast paint just through my airbrush, so I know it's going to put down a nice, smooth coat over that highlight and that uh, the base coat that I've got on there. And this was successful. I gradually build up the color until I am happy. Um, and that white underpainting shows through really, really well. This is what I was hoping for to begin with. And I should have just went this way, but I wanted to try to keep it easy so other people could do this if they didn't have airbrushes. Um, but I failed miserably. <laughs> In the end, this is the pretty much the exact color I was hoping for, so it it worked out in the end. It just took me a little bit to get there. I grab some Vallejo Game Color Warlord Purple and I start laying in some initial highlights. Um, these are not final highlights, they're just kind of kind of placeholders, just getting like a, a smooth gradation like to where the highlight's gonna uh, pop a little bit more. I go in with some Corax white and I just block in all of the, uh, the parts that I previously had white, but because of my horrible airbrushing skills, um, just had tons of overspray on. So I made those white again in preparation of uh, their future color. Now I'm going to take some Aethermatic Blue Contrast Paint and I'm going to start painting in all of the armor panels for this. And I really must say, like, this color starts to bring this model to life. Like, once I lay it down, it just, it does so much for it. It's hard to explain.
Next I make a mix of Athermatic Blue, Alkelian Green, and Contrast Medium. Um, and I thin this down with Contrast Medium so it's more of a wash. And I paint it over all of the armor again. And this gives me some really nice shadows and some pretty decent transitions. Uh, that Achillean green uh, really adds a lot of depth to this armor color. I use Wraithbone from Citadel to uh, base the interior of his cloak. And then I take some Skeleton Horde contrast paint through my airbrush and I start laying in some shadows underneath, like in the folds and uh, on the darker recesses. Hey guys, quick reminder, if you're enjoying the video, please give me a like and subscribe down below. I put out a, quite a bit of interesting content, I believe. Um, and while you're at it, hit that bell icon so you can be notified whenever I publish new videos. All right, let's get back to painting. See you at the end. Next, I take silicon gray contrast paint and I use it on the decorative elements on his helmet and his staff and his, sh his left shoulder, the skull there. Um, and I must say like this decorations on his helmet, like this is a tactical like nightmare. I mean, why would you give somebody something to grab hold of and pummel you with? But it was looking good after I painted it, so. With the staff, I take some Gore Grunta fur and while the siliconum gray is wet, I just kind of dab it, dab the gorgantifer in there and kind of just blend it together so there's a, a, a transition between the two. Now I grab Ulthwan Gray and I very carefully highlight up the ridges on all of this decorative elements. Um, I go over it a couple times just to build up that color and uh, have some nice definition and shadows in the recesses. I used Griff Charger Gray and I put a first coat on these uh, like belts and these, I don't even know what they're called, hanging from his helmet. Um, and then I go back in with more Othorn Gray and I highlight these up. go back and grab the Gorgrunt of fur again and I use it to paint up his this little belt and then also his pistol holster and this color is it's an it's a nice warm brown I think it, it plays well with the other colors um, then I grab some Bugman's glow and I start adding some little 
dabs and dashes like on the leather to make it look a little bit more worn and uh, frayed in areas. I use black Templar contrast paint and now I go in and I paint his gloves and with that athermatic blue uh, base that I have on there it really provides a really nice initial highlight I, I will be you know adding to this in a little bit but uh, just out of the bottle it looks pretty good I grab Vallejo Game Colors Steel Gray, and I use it to add a, uh, an additional highlight to all of the black areas. So that's the hoses, and then also his gloves, which I, I just painted. And now I use the Retributor Armor to start in on his gold trim, which is never ending. Um, because of course, no Space Marine, Chaos, or Imperium is complete without its, you know, prescribed dose of gold edging. At this point, I fully assemble the figure itself and complete all of the gold edging. Whenever I'm done with that, I give all of the gold a coat of snakebite leather contrast paint, and that gives a nice warm tone to all of the gold. I grab some Stormhost Silver and I start highlighting up the gold and silver portions that I've painted. I somehow lost the footage of me painting up uh, all the silver bits, but I used Iron Warriors to cover those. So like the exhaust vents on his, his uh, power pack and parts of his staff. And now we take Cyberite Green and use it to highlight up all of the uh, green parts of the armor. Uh, this is a great color, you know, it highlights very well. I thinned it out, so um, I had to go over a little bit to build up that color, but in the end, it has a really, really great highlight. I take Vallejo Game Color Warlord Purple and I mix it with Lamian Medium to make a glaze. And I build up the highlights of this cloak that he's wearing and just gradually 
layer it and build it up until I'm happy with that highlight. I like using Lamian medium and a color in this way um, because it makes it very translucent. So you can, you can make some mistakes and they're not as noticeable. Now I take Iandin Yellow Contrast Paint and Hex Wraith Flame Technical Paint and I start painting up the, uh, the warp uh, power you know, that's emanating from his arm here. And I start off putting on the Iandin Yellow and when that's still wet, I just work the Hex Wraith Flame into it and just kind of let it blend on the model. It gives it a pretty nice transition uh, once it finally dries. I use some Sotec Green and I thin it down quite uh, considerably and I start freehanding in the design on the interior part of his cloak. Um, I don't do much freehanding designs like this. Uh, mostly it's orc checkers or dags. So, um, but I think this turned out uh, pretty well. I definitely need to practice more on, these, on designs like this. I think the key is just having a, a decent brush that can hold a point. Without that, I mean, it's almost pointless trying to do this. And now I'm going to finish up part of the base using Iandin Yellow and Griffhound Orange. Um, I paint on the Iandin Yellow and then when it's still wet I paint over it with the Griffhound Orange. And it gives me some nice blends uh, throughout the, the piece here. The rest of the base was painted the exact same way as uh, the armor on the rest of the model. So. That's why I didn't go into detail and in showing how I painted it. And after mounting him to his base, I give him a couple coats of matte varnish and he's done. Um, I think he looks great. Aside from those issues that I had when I started painting, um, I overcame those and he turned out to be a very good looking model. Um, I think the moral of the story is just Make sure you test something new before you just throw it on uh, a model like this. It's it's a little different when you're dealing with like a mass of infantry and then, you know, if you mess one up, just you know not to make that mistake going forward. Uh, but I'm glad you got to be here so you could see that and maybe not have that happen with one of your models in the future. Well, thanks again for joining me here. I'm glad that... Uh, I was able to complete this and uh, let you guys see. So until next time, later. Thanks for joining me here today on Level Up Hobbies as I painted up Ariman of the Thousand Suns Chaos Space Marine chapter. Now if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe down below and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you can be notified whenever I publish new videos. Thanks again and remember, build, paint, play tabletop games.